Senators, the Governor-General will now depart. Senator Brandis. Mr Clark, it is, as it is now necessary for the Senate to choose one of its members to be president, I propose that the Senate choose Senator Ryan, and I move that Senator Ryan take the chair of the Senate as its president. Are there any further nominations? Senator Di Natale. Thank you. Uh, I propose to the Senate for its president, Senator Wish Wilson, and I move that Senator Wish Wilson take the chair of the Senate as president. Are there any further nominations? There being two nominations, I invite the candidates to address the Senate. Senator Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Clark. It is a great honour that my colleagues in the government have nominated me for this distinguished position. It is not a circumstance that I thought would present itself, uh, nor one that I particularly thought would present itself to me personally in the immediate years before me. The role of this chamber in our constitution is something that I have always treasured. I have studied it. I have taught it. I have always been a strong defender of it. It plays a unique role in giving Australians a voice who might not often have a voice in the other chamber, represented not necessarily by a geographic distinct, uh, constituency, but by interests they may form collectively through voluntary association uh, or through their efforts in our community. It is a role, and this, this chamber and the role it plays is one that I treasure. Uh, I seek your support. I appreciate that it is not common that someone who has resigned from the ministry as I have to contest this. But it is not unprecedented. I am advised that there have been eight former presidents who have previously served as ministers, and I understand the most recent one was, in fact, my distinguished predecessor, the Labor's president, Senator Douglas McClelland, who also served as special minister of state in a previous life. I actually think that particular portfolio does give me a unique perspective on how to put forward, defend the interests of senators and the Senate itself. Thank you. Senator Wish Wilson. Thank you, uh, Clark. The Greens and the crossbench are a very important part of this parliament. Here, here. We are a very important part of this chamber in the Senate, and we have been voted into this place by millions of voters across this country. There is no rules and regulations that says the government of the day has to have the president's position in this chamber. It's only been convention between the old parties, Labor and Liberal, that the president should be with the government of the day. Today, the Greens want to challenge this convention and send the message that we and the crossbench, every single one of them, play a, a critical role in this democracy, in this government in this parliament. I'd also like to say, and I've said this publicly already, that previous Senator Parry was an excellent president of the Senate. And let me be the first one to say that in this chamber this morning, following recent weeks where we haven't been here. And there are still questions to be answered around Senator Parry's departure. This government and the way it's handled this citizenship crisis is a disgrace. And you have, brought, you have brought disrespect onto the position of the President of the Senate by how you have handled this constitutional crisis. The topic is very clear that any senator in this chamber has the right to nominate for the presidency of the Senate. <laughs> You have brought disrepute onto the position of the President of the Senate by the way you have handled Senator Parry's departure. 
Senator Parry made it clear he passed on the information about his potential, his potential position in relation to his citizenship, and he was forced to resign only a few weeks ago. So I would ask that the Senate consider restoring respect to the position of the presidency and not rewarding, not rewarding the behaviour and the chaos and the lack of integrity of this government by giving the position of the presidency of the Senate to a party that has shown integrity throughout this process. The only party that has shown integrity throughout this process. We didn't think of ourselves or our political party. We thought about doing the right thing for Australia. We wanted confidence in the institution of parliament and in the role that we perform, that we were elected to perform. I think it's very clear, based on what's happened in recent months, that the Australian people have lost respect and confidence in the institution of parliament. I ask that you take one step this morning to restoring that respect by voting for the Greens into the position of the presidency of the Senate. Hear, hear. Unless any other senator wishes to address the nominations, a ballot will now be held. Senator Natale. Thank you. I'd also like to echo the Greens' proposal to nominate Senator Wish Wilson for president of the Senate. Um, the president of the Senate is a critical role in this place. It helps to determine how the Senate functions. It's a role that ensures that it brings integrity to the parliament. And right now, now more than ever, our parliament needs people who act with integrity and with decency. And, uh, and Peter Wish -Wilson, Senator Peter Wish Wilson is the right person for the role. Um, I just say to my Labor colleagues, this isn't a gift to be handed between the major parties, uh, an entitlement that belongs to either of you. This is a position that is owned by the Senate. I speak to my fellow crossbenchers as well, uh, many, of whom, many of whom I know would uh, do an admirable job in that role as well. It's not a gift of government. It's not something to be bestowed upon the next person in line. It's not a favour to be done to one of their own side. And uh, I just say that this is now an opportunity for this chamber to make a decision to elect somebody who will ensure that we bring some integrity and some decency back into this place. Um, Senator Parry was indeed a very good president. He did a very good job. I think he's a decent person. And, uh, he performed his role as president admirably. I think president, uh, the former president made a mistake, uh, but his mistake was also a function of confiding in members of his own side who told him to be quiet while he was writing referrals for other members of parliament. Let's not forget that vital point. The president was sitting in that chair writing referrals to the High Court for other members of parliament, all the while having told people on his own team, ministers no less, that he may have been ineligible and the advice he received was to sit down, be quiet and effectively hope that this issue would go away. Uh, it does show that the Liberal Party has treated the role of president as a political tool and I just implore members opposite, I implore the uh, Labor Party to recognise that now is an opportunity not to look after your own interests, knowing that at some point you are going to be in a situation where you will be demanding the presidency off the Liberal Party, but indeed show uh, that we have an opportunity to break this deadlock, to return I think, some decency to this chamber Hinch, and, to point, and to appoint somebody me, in an independent Senator role. Natale. Senator Hinch, do you point, have point a point of order? order? Mr. Clark. I object to the fact that uh, Senator Macdonald is having a private conversation while, while important information is being discussed in this chamber. Thank you. There's, there's no point of order, Senator Hinch. Senator Di Natale, you have the call. So I just finished by saying, I just finished by saying that today is an opportunity to break from this convention that says it's only the government of the day that should assume the presidency. Today's an opportunity for the Labor Party to tell the Liberal Party they don't deserve this role. They don't deserve to have the next president of the Senate because of the way they treated the previous one, because of the way 
They said to the previous president, ignore your constitutional obligation, knowing that you may be ineligible, and keep your head down, be quiet, and let's hope the whole thing goes away. It is an opportunity to, res to restore some respect in the office of the president, and I do believe that Senator Wish Wilson is the right person for the job. Senator Wish Wilson has served as a temporary chair of the Senate for four years now. He brings uh, very valuable insights on what reforms could be made to improve the functioning of this parliament. He's made it clear that if he's elected, he's pledged to donate any additional salary to charity. Uh, he has demonstrated that he, he wants to use this opportunity to usher in a new era of openness, of transparency, of integrity and accountability to this parliament. And I commend Senator Wish Wilson's nomination to the Senate. A ballot will now be held. The bells will be rung for four minutes before the ballot takes place.
Senators, could you please return to your seats? Thank you, Senators. Order, Senators, please return to your places. The Senate will now uh, proceed to a ballot. Ballot papers will be distributed. Please write the name of the candidate you wish to vote for. The candidates are Senator Ryan and Senator Wish Wilson. Have all senators voted? The ballot papers will now be collected. I invite Senators Bushby and Seawitt to act as scrutineers.
The result of the ballot is as follows. Senator Ryan, 53 votes. Senator Wish Wilson, 11 votes. One invalid vote. Senator Ryan is therefore elected 25th President of the Australian Senate in accordance with the standing orders. Thank you, Senators. Um, as I mentioned in my earlier statement, um, I appreciate that it is rare that someone has stepped down from the ministry to take on this position, and with your support I am honoured to do so. I do emphasise I am now your servant. I now represent all Senators. I am no longer part of the executive government, and I will treat every Senator uh, on the merits of them as an individual representative of their state, regardless of party or office held. I thank you once again for the distinguished honour in which you granted me. Senator Brandis. Mr President, on behalf of all honourable senators, it is a great privilege and pleasure to congratulate you on your election as the 25th President of the Australian Senate. Yours has already been a conspicuous parliamentary career. Elected at the 2007 election, you, Mr President, established your reputation at an early stage as an active and competent participant in the Senate's committee system, including a period of time as chair of the Senate Finance and Public Administration Committee. When the coalition was in opposition, you were appointed to the shadow ministry and upon the election of the Abbott government in 2013, you took your place on the front bench. You, were, uh, you served initially as parliamentary secretary to the Minister for Education and Training. 
You served as Assistant Cabinet Secretary, as Minister for Vocational Education and Skills, and most recently as Special Minister of State. You have also been the Deputy Manager of Government Business in the Senate. But, Mr President, as you say, with your election to the high office of President of the Senate, you put any loyalty to the executive government behind you because you are now a servant of the Senate itself. I mean no disrespect to any other senator when I say I cannot think of a better person to fulfil this role. Mr President, we have known each other for many years and I am proud to be able to number you among my friends. And one thing I know of you from the many, many conversations we have had over the years is that you are a profound believer in the importance of institutions, in their integrity, in their stability, in their role in Australian democracy. You will bring that commitment to the importance of institutions to the role of president. You are, of course, somebody who identifies, as do I, as a classical liberal and as somebody who embraces that philosophy as well. You are somebody who understands the importance that in this the preeminent parliamentary chamber of the land, the Australian Senate, free and thorough debate on the legislation and the important issues before the Australian people should be conducted in an intellectually honest and open way. We all know you to be a person of integrity. We all know you to be a person with a natural and quiet authority. Those of us who know you well know you are a great stickler for the rules. Your knowledge of the Senate standing orders and procedure of this chamber is legendary. You will bring all of those qualities to a fine period of service as President of the Senate. It should be noted on this occasion that we have just sworn in the youngest ever senator in the history of the Commonwealth of Australia, Senator Steele John, that you, Mr President, will be the youngest person ever to become president of the Senate at the age of 44. And may I say, at least on behalf of government senators, that because you have so many years ahead of you, we trust that you will continue to be president for many years, if not decades, to come. It is also, it is also of note it is also of note, Mr President, that you are the first Victorian senator to, the, to hold the office of President of the Senate since the late Senator Sir Magnus Cormack, of whom we read more often than we expected in recent weeks and months. Mr President, you, had a law, you were a student of politics before you became a senator. You graduated from the University of Melbourne with first-class honours in arts. Those who know you are surprised that you don't have a law degree because you know more about constitutional law than most lawyers do. You certainly know more about American political history and American constitutional law than almost anybody I have ever met. You, before your time as a senator, worked at the Institute of Public Affairs. You worked as a senior advisor to the Leader of the Opposition in Victoria as a speechwriter for Senator the Honourable Nick Minchin uh, in the office of the former Premier of Victoria, the Honourable Jeff Kennett, and on the staff of the former Treasurer, the Honourable Peter Costello. Indeed, the occasion should not pass unremarked that protégés of Peter Costello's, namely you and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tony Smith, um, now preside over both chambers of the Australian Parliament. It's particularly significant, Mr President, that you should be a protégé of Peter Costello's in your current office 
given his deep and abiding affection and respect for the Senate. <laughs> Mr President, as I say, we look forward to you presiding over this chamber with the dignity, the authority, the fairness and the integrity which are your hallmarks. It's also appropriate on this occasion for me to note the fact that because of the circumstances of his departure, there will not be the usual occasion for valedictory speeches about the former president of the Senate, the Honourable Stephen Parry. We all know the circumstances which led Senator Parry to conclude that he ought to resign. They were not without political controversy, but they do not reflect upon Senator Parry personally. What, we sh what, I, what I should say, and I am gladdened and appreciative of the remarks of Senator Wish Wilson and Senator Di Natale in their earlier contributions, is that Senator Parry was a very fine president of the Senate. He was also acknowledged on all sides of the chamber for his even-handedness and his authority. The fact that Senator Parry is no longer with us is a cause of regret to the many of us who were his friends. And I wish to um, take the occasion to thank Stephen Parry for the great service that he did to this institution and for the dignity with which he presided over the uh, chamber in his period of service as president. But those days, the Parry presidency is behind us. We look forward with eagerness to the rejuvenation represented by the presidency of yourself, uh, Mr. President. Um, I have to get out of the habit of calling you Senator Ryan and refer you, to you only by your more dignified title as you sit in the chair on behalf of government senators and I'm sure on behalf of all in the chamber. We congratulate you and we wish you well. Thank you. Senator Wong. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise on behalf of the opposition to congratulate you on your election uh, to the position of president. And at the outset, I note that the opposition does take the view that the government of the day has the right to nominate the president of the Senate. I note, I note that there were some comments made, and I continue in this, this disappointingly in what is generally a ceremonial part of these proceedings, to be made about that convention. We take that view because we do regard the functioning of this chamber as important to our democracy. And in a chamber where no one party has a majority, we think conventions such as these, the two parties of government have the president and the deputy president, assist in the st stability and effective functioning of the chamber. Uh, can, and that, that is our view. Uh, I would also make this point. Uh, that convention uh, is not a blank cheque. Uh, it is always the expectation of any opposition, uh, and I'm sure of any government, uh, that uh, whoever is nominated for president or deputy president is someone who is appropriately qualified and suited to the significant responsibility that comes uh, with this position. Uh, and I am pleased uh, that the government has nominated uh, a senator who uh, has those appropriate qualities uh, and that the opposition in is, a, is in a position to support you. Uh, Senator Ryan uh, uh, has, as the uh, leader of the government has said, been a senator for Victoria since 2008, twice re-elected. I would uh, refer to, just so the president does recall this, uh, one of the things he has spoken about, which is the role of the bicameral, a bicameral parliament in the nation's de democracy. I'm proud to describe myself as a federalist. It is entirely consistent with liberalism that the power, that power should be divided and kept as close as possible to the people. This chamber itself reflects that fact. This Senate is granted a mandate by the people to review, reject or amend legislation. It is an explicit and intentional check on the domination of the other place by the executive. Uh, well, I thank Senator Ryan for those commitments, the President, to the place. I thank him, thank him for his commitment to the place of the Senate in our constitutional system of government. He is right to reflect that this is the chamber in which executive government is held to account in a way which rarely occurs in the House of Representatives. Uh, and this, of course, demonstrates the importance of fairness and impartiality uh, being brought uh, to the position of president. I have no doubt that the president's first statements in this place will be an ongoing guide to him 
uh, as he uh, undertakes his role as president. Um, I make a, a few other points. Um, <clears throat> uh, I am advised that it is because I did raise this uh, when, when I saw your name in the paper, Mr President, about the fact that you'd been a, a, a prior minister. I understand that, in fact, the last former minister to serve as president of the Senate was Doug McClelland, uh, who served in the Whitlam ministry, also coincidentally as the special minister of state. And one of my staff tells me that the last bearded president was also a Labor senator, Mr Behan, Senator Behan. So there you are. You reflect two very, 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 very good strong and competent uh, Labor presidents. We hope you do that, uh, do that tradition uh, well. Um, I want to make some very brief comments about Senator Parry, given that the Leader of the Government has, has done so. Uh, the opposition retains concerns about the circumstances of Senator Parry's departure, and uh, we will, uh, I'm sure, in subsequent debates put those views about who knew what and when, but now is not the time. I would make this point. In my dealings with him, I found him competent and decent. Uh, I think he was a fair president. Uh, I think he was a defender of the role of this chamber. And on behalf of the opposition, I thank him for his service. Uh, once again, I uh, congratulate you, Mr. President, uh, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Senator Di Natale. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr President. Um, it's great to see another Victorian in the chair. Um, I think you and I first met on the hustings uh, in the campaign for uh, the Senate. It might have been back in 2007. Um, look, our politics are very different. I think when you were cutting your teeth with the Institute of Public Affairs, I was out there with my doctor's bag somewhere around the country. But I've always found you to be a very decent, straightforward, honest and direct person to deal with. I think you handled your role as Special Minister of State with aplomb. And I have to say on behalf of the Greens, we've always found you uh, to be very receptive. Um, you're one of the few parliamentarians in this place who answers his phone almost religiously whenever uh, we've called. I've had occasion to think that maybe you're not busy enough, but um, <laughs> uh, you have always been very receptive and, uh, and we're very grateful for your assistance. And uh, I'm sure you will conduct your role as president in the same way as you have conducted yourself previously. I didn't know that you were uh, an expert on constitutional law, and I suspect maybe your, some of your advice may be uh, welcome uh, to your side at the moment. Um, I want to say a couple of words about Senator Parry. Senator Parry was a, a very fine president. Uh, he did a good job. We were, uh, as Greens, uh, again, although we may not have shared his political views, uh, we all felt that he handled that role uh, uh, with the independence it, it requires and, uh, and was always fair. Uh, during question time, pulling up not just um, uh, opposition and crossbench senators, but sometimes uh, people on his own uh, team. And I'm sure you'll uh, conduct yourself in the same way. Um, uh, Senator Brandis said in his speech, I think the quote was, we all know the circumstances in which he left. Well, the sad fact is we don't. We don't know that all of the circumstances in which Senator Parry departed. Uh, we know that there are issues around him confiding in ministers. And that is, a, uh, that is obviously a concern and something that should be followed up at a later point. Look, in closing, Mr President, I um, understand you've had some health issues recently. Um, just be careful, those lunches and dinners uh, that you'll be uh, finding yourself uh, um, presiding over regularly. Um, you might want to make sure that you have uh, some special meal requirements for you because it's going to be a very taxing, uh, taxing few, uh, few years in the role. But we wish you all the best. Uh, and good luck uh, in your new um, role as President of the Senate. Senator Scullion. Mr President, um, on behalf of the National Party, we'd like to congratulate you uh, on your ascension to the presidency. Uh, I have to say, as we look across uh, uh, the Liberal Party, you would be somebody with the skill sets, uh, particularly uh, you know, your knowledge of standing orders, um, uh, your knowledge of the Constitution, but most importantly, your, your well-known love of the Senate and its special role that it plays uh, as a particular institution uh, across our parliament. Um, there is, there is a, a, another element, of course, uh, about impartiality. We've heard from the others across the chamber, and the consistent process, of course, is you are trusted, you're a decent person, but you respect this place in so much as you will always be impartial. 
Uh, congratulations on your ascension, Mr. President. And could I just say uh, uh, I'd like to also take this opportunity to acknowledge what I consider just a fantastic role the previous, previous president, uh, Senator Parry, played. Um, and again, if somebody in this place, and I have plenty of conversations across the chamber, and the word you say about Senator Parry, he was fair and impartial. Uh, and I, I, I would say, uh, since I've been in this place, he was certainly the best president that I've ever served under. And, uh, and, and we would wish his well in the future. But Mr. President, congratulations on behalf of the Nationals on your ascension. Yeah. Senator Bernardi. Well, thank you, Mr. President. In adding the voice of the Australian Conservatives to the congratulations on your election as president, um, I'd like to uh, acknowledge and recognise you, that you are a student of history. And history is what essentially guides us in this chamber and in this parliament. Uh, not only is there the letter of the law and the standing orders, but there's also the intent of them. And I think um, the intent uh, of when they were framed, the um, conduct and manner in which they are upheld, the convention effectively and the, the spirit in which um, we engage in our business here are all uh, invested in the presidency of the Senate. Uh, your predecessor, I thought, got the balance very right. It's um, no secret that he, was a good fr he is a good friend of mine. And I thought he, he handled his job with uh, a mixture of sense of humour, um, the spirit of which it was intended, the robust debate here, but also in upholding the dignity and principle of, of this place. And, Mr President, in, I guess, a very challenging time for the standing of parliament, um, I think uh, uh, you, the wise choice the Senate has made in, in installing you as the president of the Senate or electing you to that position is one that will help to re-establish some dignity based upon the historical principles that have made us one of the great democracies anywhere else in the world. So I congratulate you and I look forward to working with you. And uh, I'm sure you've already noticed that uh, some of us appreciate the role of convention so you haven't had to make any dubious rulings already. Thank you. Senator Hinch. Thank you, Mr President. Um, on behalf of the Justice Party, I'd like to say congratulations to you on, on winning this election. Uh, I do believe that it is the right of the major party in the Senate to make the appointment of, of the President of the Senate. I would say you were one of the first people I met as a Senator-elect in Melbourne last year. Uh, I think you're a great selection to be President. I would say to you, and nobody else will understand this, but Tahiti Nui is a great place which we shall one day celebrate. And because we're so close to Christmas, I can say to you, Mr. President, Meli Kaliki Maka. On uh, Senator Parry, I would say that he was my favourite person in this whole chamber. As a newcomer, he treated me with uh, respect. He, he gave me knowledge. He took me into his office and showed me the, uh, the speaker's the president's wig from uh, decades ago. Uh, I found him to be an amazing president. He controlled this place fairly, amicably, and with, with style and substance. I would say, though, and I'll be dishonest, I've said it elsewhere, that I felt betrayed by President Parry. I thought as a former policeman, he knew right from wrong, and I thought him sitting in his chair for as long as he did, I think he was betrayed by the wrong advice he got from his ministerial colleagues and the way he went was, 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 was very sad and was wrong, but I would have to say he was a great president. Thank you. Senator Brandis. Thank you, Mr. President. I inform honourable senators that the Governor General will be pleased to receive the president and such honourable senators as do desire to accompany him in the president's suite immediately. The sitting of the, of the Senate is suspended until the ringing of the bells.